This is Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. The Sacramento Kings opened the 2018-19 season with a 123-117 loss to the Utah Jazz last night. Willie Cauley-Stein led the way for Sacramento. He had 23 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists, and a couple of blocks. De'Aaron Fox had 21 points and 7 dimes. Marvin Bagley, he played 12 minutes but put up 6 points and 5 boards. Harry Giles had 2 points in 10 minutes. The Kings now head to New Orleans to face the Pelicans on Friday in baseball. The Dodgers took a 3-2 series lead in the NLCS with a 5-2 win over the Brewers down in LA yesterday. That series now shifts to Milwaukee. The Red Sox took a commanding 3-1 lead over the Astros in the ALCS with a thrilling 8-6 win in Houston. Game 5 of that series is tonight. Week 7 of the NFL kicks off tonight as well in Arizona with the Broncos facing the Cardinals. You can listen to that game right here on Sports 1140. Kickoff is set for 5-20. It's 8-03. Carpets Plus is having our fall sale. 25% off all of your flooring needs. Those are your top stories. Time for the drive. Sports 1140 KHK. I'm not letting you go to work today. Wait, what? Hey now. Everybody, listen up. Welcome to the drive. That's what she said. You're going to talk. Get on the phone at 339-1140. Pretty awesome, huh? Jump in on our text line at 44-1140. Everyone is talking about it. You must know that. The drive starts now. Out of the timeout. The elites the left side of the lane sets up the alley oop. Spike it down, Willie Cauley Stein. Look at the Kings bench. Everybody in purple down there jumping up and enjoying that moment. And Bielitsu was really good Jackson last back night. Out to Eng- Sorry, what? I didn't know you were doing another one. Oh, that's okay. You said Bielitsu was really good last night. Yeah. Well, speaking of Bielitsu. Four on the clock. Gonna have to create. Launches over heel, no good. Rebound, Bielitsa. Dang. Big possession for the Kings. Belly kicks it up the left side. Digs now to the edge of the paint. Reaches inside at the rim. He scores. We're on a one-point ball game at 73-72. Nemanja Bielitsa in his Kings debut has 13 points. He was very good last night. He sure was, and because of that, it's time to visit MedaChevy.com and see who's made a great deal at Meta. Uh, one of those like just kind of sneaky like under the radar signings he was going to go to the Sixers and then was going to go to Europe but then the Kings convinced him to come to Sacramento and he performed really well last well I I think it's fair listen it's only one game we're not making huge conclusions good or bad no but I I I think when you say the Kings convinced him listen we're all so hard on Vlade Divac and some of that's deserved this was Vlade that convinced him. It was Vlade and Vlade. Vlade picked up the phone and said, hey, dude, I'm Vlade Divac, and uh, you're thinking of retiring or going over there and doing it. Why don't you come over and play for us? And Bielitsa goes, okay. And he comes over, and, and he's in the starting lineup. I, I think it's important, especially this year, as we grade the team, we grade Dave Yeager, we uh, grade Vlade Divac. I think it's important to point out the good as well as the bad. And, and in in this case, Bielitsa was very good. Last night, at least, it was very good. I also want to uh, shout out uh, our good friend and just the, the best in the business, a guy that you, you never hear anybody talk anything but positive about for a reason, on or off the air, Gary Gerald. Uh, they announced last night that he had uh, entered the gold circle at the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences for all his work as a broadcaster over the years. Uh, and if there was like a gold circle for being an awesome person, uh, he would have been in there a long time ago too. We are we are so dang lucky, and, and we talk about you know Grant and Doug and the TV side all the time. We are so lucky uh, to have Gary Gerald through all of this, all, all all the good, the mostly bad. On my list of reasons I want this team to win a championship, uh, I'm number one because I want to see it. But G-Man's right there. I want I want to hear G-Man make that call. G-Man and talking about this show last night mm-hmm. uh, on air, they they had to do a read where they said, and yeah. he said my name on air. Really? Yeah, while I was listening. Uh, and I almost drove off the road. Yeah. You've made it, kid. Like, I've been around this station enough that not a lot of things are like, oh, that's really cool. Sure. Dude, I was... 100%. 100%. Drink. Drink. All right, joining <laughs> us right now. From the Athletic... The one and the only Samuel Amick. Good morning, Sam. Hope you're uh, hope you're in mid-season mode, my man. 
Kyle, just so you know, that's that's how I feel when Dave says my name every time. <laughs> yeah, but same I, actually. The problem is, I have like it's, it's, Sam will will acknowledge this. I'm sure, usually off the air. I have about 18 nicknames for Sam, some of which are not airworthy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how often I refer to you as Sam off the air is the problem. That's fair. We were just, yeah. I mean, you could share with the listeners you're coming up with with new cocktails related to my name. <laughs> I. Uh, he calls me Samuel over text, but he spelled it like Moscow Mule instead of you Sam know the way it's actually Mule. spelled. Yes, Samuel, and and then uh, because he always likes to make fun of my old corduroy jackets, he says you know bourbon and corduroy. That's, that's the uh, the drink of joy. <laughs> I mean, like I'm one to. It was a nice jacket. It's just you know what your drink is, Dave. What? Whiskey and disgust. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, a promo. I thought it was the cushy poker player. I thought... <laughs> yeah, well, there's that too. Don't even, now you're going to take me down a different road. You know, I I made fun of your cushy poker First. player build, and then and then our friend uh, Dave Deuce Mason. I'll never forget and or forgive <laughs> saying I had a dad bod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want to point out that Sam made fun of me. Not only did he make fun of me first, but he made fun of me in an article in the B <laughs> talking about one of the greatest summers of my life when Ron Artest came in studio all summer. And, you know, I'm showing my mom and my dad, you know, all my relatives are looking at this article. It's like, uh, Dave, what, I believe he used my real last name, and it was just also neat with those phone calls I got. Hey, uh, hey Dave, with uh, his cushy poker player build, oh, just call me fat. <laughs> it's okay. The, the fatty at KSDK. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Hey, did I see that uh, you uh, you went out on a limb and went with Harry Giles as your uh, one of your rookie of the year guys? I yeah, thought, I think I did. I thought, I, but it I, was out of – listen, Harry's going to be good. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel so bad for Kings fans. I think I was just trying to give him something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I – I, I could I mean I don't know the rookie of the year thing yeah you have this kind of unofficial calculus of like you know they've got to have opportunity um, you know I think Marvin Bagley's going to be coming along a lot more slowly and I think Harry probably I mean come on a guy's been waiting for a while to kind of be able to do his thing and show the world who he is as a basketball player um, so yeah I think he'll have a good year uh, I wouldn't I don't want to be disingenuous and, and not admit that after filing that prediction I then you know like you just we're all trying to figure out what we think of these different guys sure. and you see some of the other rookies doing their thing and I, it'll be a fun rookie class you know I mean I know that uh, there's a lot of local focus on Luka Doncic and how good he's looked but you know we, we're also guilty of too many reactions early on you know we don't know what it's going to look like in, in March and April but uh, Harry should be good I enjoyed uh, have you seen the Kings Video they put together about six minutes on yeah. Harry's story. Yeah. yeah, it was good stuff. Good stuff. So I'm rooting for him. I mean, he's been through a lot. So just fun to see what he does. I, I found myself watching the video. It's such a great story. And I, and I found myself uh, kind of in awe that they had video of him. God, I want to say it was like an eighth grade or a freshman in high school or something. And I noticed that his his demeanor and his attitude and his tone was almost exactly the same as it is right now. And that's not me saying he sounds younger than he is now. That's me saying in eighth grade he sounded older than he right. should have. And this kid's been through absolute wars with his knees. Uh, everybody, I, Chris Weber uh, was there last night, was talking about how you know, people asked him, well, it, Giles reminds us a little bit of you. He said he could be better than me. That's a lot of pressure on this kid, on this kid's shoulders. But, man, yeah, he's right. got to have a chip on his shoulder with all this. Yeah, he does. He does. He's been through a ton, and and you forget, like what struck me about that video, is to see some of the biggest names in the game talking about him. To have Coach K's perspective, um, and, and Coach K made a great point where he just simply said that, you know, that the more time and distance that Harry can get between, you know, the the awful injuries he went through, and you know, and now just hooping then the greater the odds that he can maybe become, you know, who he was kind of meant to be as a basketball player. So I thought that was insightful. You know, you had LeBron, uh, I assume at last season at some point, maybe in training camp, LeBron weighing in. I yeah. think LeBron said something about how it's the first time he'd seen Harry, you know, without knee braces on. So um, a lot of people rooting for him. The Chris Weber cameo was in the video. I, I did chuckle. It looked like 
Lucy Webb still had the Uncle Drew makeup on, and he was looking uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> made me feel old because we're like in the same yeah you know, neighborhood. I'm like, geez, all right, but yeah, I mean, you know, Harry's going to be a fun story to, to follow. Sam Amick of the Athletic joining us. You can read his work at theathletic.com. We'll get into more of that a bit later. I want to remind you, Sam making the first of his uh, appearances for the entire season as he did last year. Sam will join us each and every Thursday at eight oh five. And and Sam, I, I know it's more fifty thousand feet with you because you're covering the entire NBA, but you live here, and I know you keep uh, an eye on the Kings. I, I I don't know if you were there last night or not, but I know you. Uh, I'm sure you watched uh, a decent portion of the game. A lot of people uh, upset uh, that that Bagley played 12 minutes as opposed to, I, I think the number we had was 14 rookies played more minutes than Marvin Bagley. I want to ask you to get into David Yeager's rotations. Cause I think for the most part, Kings fans were happy uh, and surprised with the performance. But do you think, uh, do you have Dave Yeager uh, on your list of guys on the hot seat this year? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, yeah and to be, it's, I mean, I do, I think the Kings in general, and I haven't taken a great pulse, you know, it's not like I sat down with Vivek and, and had him give his perspective on Vlade either, but I feel like it's coming to a head a bit uh, in Sacramento where I just don't know the mentality from ownership management on you, are you really going to just ride this thing out um, with the fans being frustrated all the way through. So let's assume they're going to lose a ton of games. And, you know, the, the thing, the anvil over the head, so to speak, is just – the, like the optics of not having your pick next summer, I yeah. feel like it, it, it takes the level of hope even farther down. And I mean, that's, you hear people in the league say all the time that, you know, you, if you can't sell wins, you sell hope. That's how this thing works. And so I don't know in the absence of that, how, you know, how guys like Dave Yeager and Vlade are going to avoid being kind of, you know, collateral damage. So we'll see. I mean, with Dave, uh, the other layer, in my opinion, is still has you know a very good reputation as a coach, and he's also still, I mean, fair or not, he's got that label of of kind of having a wandering eye and having you know there's scuttlebutt around the league about you know is he wondering if there's you know something better for him somewhere else, um, and that's kind of been on him for the past couple of years. So I don't know, you know, we'll see what happens there, but uh, you know, I think he is on that uh, on that list. Sam Amick with us. Uh, Sam, we've been really hard on, on Vlade uh, at times, especially around the Cousins trade and in regards to the Philadelphia trade. Uh, I was talking to a, a smart person that knows things last night, <clears throat> and I want to try to sell you something, and you tell me uh, if you are buying it or not. Vlade made the Philadelphia trade, which in retrospect was a mistake, but the idea there was to to bring in a point guard that, that – DeMarcus Cousins, had he had like 50 point guards in four years. He wanted to bring him a guy that respected him, that could watch him, a Kentucky guy in Rondo, along with Bellinelli, who completely quit while he was here, uh, Costa Kufus, uh, et cetera. He wanted to try to give DeMarcus Cousins uh, a last chance to, to shine with actual vets around him. That did not work, and, and we're paying the price for it. Uh, the other big mistake people uh, look at is, is the Orgos Papianis draft. But, yeah, what, Denzel Valentine... Uh, Wade Baldwin the fourth. It would have been one of those two. They haven't exactly lit it up. Baldwin got released. So, yeah, Papianis was a bad pick, but there wasn't much behind him. And you don't have the first-round pick this year, but this is the point the person made. Hey, listen, that's a gamble you take. You've got Giles. You've got Bagley. You've got Fox. You've got all these guys that need minutes. Yeah, you'd like to have that pick, but at the same time, if you're going to miss a pick, you have two lottery picks essentially this year in Giles and Bagley. That there is a vision, whether he's right or wrong, that Vlade has created a vision, has tried to execute that vision by building young guys and having cap space this summer to go grab a three. Do you buy that as letting him off the hook in hindsight, especially with the Cousins trade, which he, by the way, clearly won if you're comparing Cousins, you know, the Kings to the Pelicans. I know I'm being long-winded here, but do you buy any of that as far as a defense of Vlade's tenure as GM? I mean, I'll meet you, you know, 30 to 40% of the way on, on that. Um, there's some decent kind of meat on that bone. The thing, the thing that if I was, you know, and, and listen, it's funny, Dave, the longer I cover this league, like you, you know, I'm not afraid to admit like we're human, right? So I like certain people. I don't like other people. Sure. Vladi's extremely likable. I, I get along great with Vladi. And I, if I was doing Vladi's PR, honestly, I would, because people won't forget about the Philly trade and they just won't let it go. Like there needs to be like the question of did he 
uh, make a mistake by not understanding the stretch provision and the other options that were available to him on the table at the time, you know, so that he wouldn't have to give up that first to Philly uh, in order to create the room, you know, and obviously dump Jason Thompson, Carl Landry, those guys that I don't, and you know, tell me if you disagree, I just still don't think the Kings of Lottie have ever um, in a very direct manner addressed that situation because unfortunately around the NBA, like that is the like unforgivable sin that people won't let Vladi off the hook for because the perception is still that he didn't know what he was doing at the time, and that's why that trade happened. And I've you know I've talked to Vladi, and certainly the intimation has been that that's not the case, and that there were other reasons that he thought this was the better approach. But you know that I only bring that up to say that the tough part about the league is that once you have like a stain on you. Um, it, it, it goes from executives to agents to players. And I think over time it's, it's making it tricky for the Kings to get in the room on some of these different situations because of the perception of, you know, the kind of the way this front office got off to a tough start. So a lot of what you're saying makes sense. They do have good young prospects. I mean, I think I might've already shared this with you on the air a while back, but like, you know, I talked to a GM not long ago who, kind of surprised me, you know, I guess I'll call him a Western Conference GM, um, and raved about the way the Kings have kind of uh, taken a bunch of bites at the apple in the draft and collected the kinds of assets that, in his opinion, were attractive to other teams that were looking for young talent. And so he thought that could get them in some trade discussions that could kind of speed up their timeline. So we'll see if any of that stuff happens. Um, you know, it's not nearly and, and ever as black and white as people make it out to be that, that it's been a, a terrible tenure for Vladi at all, um, but uh, but there's definitely been mistakes. Can I throw you a little theory on that? Because I agree with you, they've never addressed that. Um, Pete D'Alessandro took the job with the Nuggets uh, in June of 2015. That Kings Philly trade was July. Now I don't know this, but I I would just guess that a possibility, and the reason why Vlade doesn't want to address it directly, I, I don't think they had the infrastructure. I just don't think he knew. I think he was given the yeah. job. I think Pete kind of quit on the whole deal. You know about that power struggle there. I think Vlade flat out took the situation, made the trade, and I agree with you. I, I, I think the stretch provision was a mistake, but remember, their analytics department was, was non-existent. Uh, I don't think he had anybody underneath him to point that out. You're talking about an ex-player coming in and doing the job for the first time. It's not an excuse, but it is kind of an excuse, and I don't think he wants to come out and say, hey, you know what, I didn't, I didn't have the uh, – I didn't have the colleagues there to point that out to me. We didn't have the inter- infrastructure in the front office, and now but we see, do. Hold the, but that's the problem. And this is not obviously personal with Vlade, but that's the problem right there. Sure. There's only 30 of these jobs. Yep. All 30 of those people should be able to do that. And that's not his fault because the Kings hired – If it, let's just continue with your premise mm-hmm. that that was the case. You know, it, it's you know they, they hired him to do it. Uh, they You're right. They created an environment where they, they didn't make sure that, you know, he knew – the CBA backwards and forwards, but that's where they lose themselves. If that makes any sense yeah. with the rest of the league, because that's, you know, there is a, it's kind of, I don't know what a good parallel is to a player. Like there's only 30 franchise centerpiece players, so to speak. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, so if, you know, if LeBron hears a story about how, uh, I don't know who a good example is, you know, let's say when DeMarcus was in new Orleans, how DeMarcus like, just never works out, treats his teammates like garbage, like that type of a story peer to peer would not be forgotten. And it would frame the way he looked at that peer. Sure. And, and that's what's happened here is that um, people around the league don't really, they're not really hearing the timeline with Pete. They're not really hearing the excuse. Like it's unforgivable to them. Uh, and so that's, that's where I just don't know how you heal that wound perception wise. No, and I completely agree with you. And and I it, it really doesn't matter in the end whose fault it is, whether it's organization or Vlade, though or the, the franchise itself got hurt. I'll, I'll Let me put you on the spot, and I don't expect you to know this. I just honestly don't know either. When you look through the list of general managers in the league, um, a Danny Ainge, uh, if you look at ex-players, uh, I, I know brand new over there is uh, Elton Brand. Uh, when you've got players, you know, Steve Kerr uh, with the Suns for a while, are you familiar enough with any of those front offices, Ainge in particular, to know if did he, do you know if Ainge came in with a working knowledge of the CBA or is are guys like that uh, who maybe didn't grow up in an accounting firm 
do they have do they have that supplemental knowledge and assistance to help them out Ainge, I, I can't speak to. I don't remember the sure. timeline of when he took the job. I mean, Elton Brand's an interesting one because I just heard uh, a pretty good podcast with Elton and Chris Mannix of Yahoo Sports. And honestly, Elton paints a picture that is much, much healthier and the type of thing that the Kings should have, you know, made happen is, you know, Elton having a, a you know, a, a lower role, forget his title at the time, I think VP of Basketball Ops, um, you know, and learning – with Brian Colangelo at that time, part of the group, um, and and then kind of getting his feel of the whole situation before taking the reins. And then during a, a robust interview process, not only beating out high-level executives from Houston, from Utah, uh, but also internal candidates. They had two other people with the Sixers who went for the job in addition to Eldon, and then Eldon wins out. And, you know, that, that that's a, a more, I think, a more legitimate thing as opposed to the way that that it felt at the time um, in Sacramento, which was, you know, gee, we really need something that's going to, you know, make the fans feel a little bit better, and then we think Lottie can grow into the job. Uh, And I do feel for him on that front because they should have created more of a safety net. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, they didn't hire Ken Catanella until later. And then Ken came in, you know, from Detroit as a guy with, you know, very strong on the the salary cap and all the types of things we're talking about. I also think... Like your question's fair. It's also the stretch provision in general. This is not something that, you know, is on page 722 and in fine print that just got overlooked. The stretch provision is not a very complicated thing. It's, you know what I mean? It's not, you know, that's, that's where it's tough. And the, the part where I feel for the organization is that this is the story is coming back to haunt them because of the fact that a, they don't have the pick this summer and that's why, and any bad team is going to be looking forward to its pick. So that's, you know, that's a, a tough blow. And the other thing is just it's a major storyline because it probably winds up going to Boston, which is absolutely insane Yeah, that that team is as good as they are and they could find themselves with one of the best guys in the draft. So that's uh, that's kind of the, the thing that won't go away for them this season. It's mm, the reason why he's one of my favorite guys to talk to. I never plan anything out because odds are Sam and I will find a rabbit hole to go down. You can go down the rabbit hole with him at theathletic.com. Just go there, click on NBA, and you can see from uh, about a day ago, Sam's got his Western Conference tiers uh, from a, a league scout, team-by-team team takes on that, including your Sacramento Kings. And as much as I like that article, Sam hit a grand slam if you go to The Athletic and you click on Inc., I-N-K, where they have their long-form pieces, uh, the definitive piece on, as much as I hate the Lakers and everything they stand for, I appreciate good journalism, on Jeannie Buss, on the struggle with her brothers, on bringing in LeBron James, and on Kobe Bryant's role uh, at a lunch with Jeannie in Newport Beach on uh, maybe uh, helping her brain a little bit or at least giving her some advice uh, that probably is very similar, I would imagine, the advice that... Uh, her late great father, Dr. Jerry Buss, would have given her and a, a tremendous insight uh, and access that you get from Sam on all that. And you can only get that from the athletic.com. Well done on that piece, by the way, buddy. And uh, well done on this interview as well. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate the plug. As you know, I'm, I'm a walking commercial these days, but uh, it's been fun. I, I'm not kidding you. And we got some good writers. So if you are a hoops fan, sign up, check it out. And uh, we got a bunch of, bunch of people trying to kill the game. So it's been a good time. Sam Mule, Corduroy and Bourbon, coming to the bar <laughs> near you. <laughs> say, hi to, say hi to the wife and kids, and we'll talk soon, my man. All right, buddy. Thanks, David. Take care. That's Sam Amick. Seriously, though, go check out uh, those articles, uh, including a, a scout's take on uh, your Sacramento Kings. Oh, we'll take a break. When we come back, Kyle and I are going to go around the NBA. There was more NBA than just the Sacramento Kings last night, including Anthony Davis doing Anthony Davis things, along with a couple of his teammates. That New Orleans Pelicans team looked fantastic, which is great. Because the Kings get them for their home opener, oh, in, you know, about 20, 36 hours. Hey, great news. We got a promo clip out of Sam there. So did we? We did. Oh, we got ourselves a promo. We were looking to do that today. We'll take a break. Back with your NBA roundup and your Kings uh, questions and comments right here on Sports 1140 KHDK. This is Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. The Kings opened their 2018-19 season with a 123-117 loss to the Utah Jazz last night. Willie Cauley-Stein led the way for the Kings. 23 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 blocks. De'Aaron Fox had 21 points. Marvin Bagley had 6 points in 12 minutes 
off the bench in baseball. The Dodgers took a 3-2 series lead in the NLCS of the 5-2 win over the Brewers in Los Angeles yesterday. The Red Sox took a 3-1 lead over the Astros in the ALCS with an 8-6 win down in Houston. Game 5 of that series is tonight. Also tonight, Week 7 of the NFL season begins with Arizona and Denver facing off down in the desert. The Broncos and Cardinals kick off at 520, and you can listen to that one right here on Sports 1140. It's 833. Carpets Plus is having our fall sale, 25% off all of your flooring needs. Those are your top stories. Now it's back to the drive on Sports 1140 KHDK. Here we go. The drive continues now. You know, it's not going to surprise me at all if the Kings have a pick in this draft in the first round, by the way. I think they have enough, like, second rounders and kind of, like, fringe assets that they can. There's a team that will take a flyer on Scal. Sure. Who played zero minutes last night? Uh, that is correct. That is correct. I, I, Scal I, and a second rounder for a, for a bottom five pick? I mean, uh... I don't know. It'd have to make sense for the other team. I don't. I. I, I could see honestly. I could see. Um, and again, injuries play a lot into this. Yeah. Um, I could see Willie and a couple second rounders for a late first rounder. I could see that. I, I truly think. I, I. This is me talking. I truly think if they have a chance to get value for Willie this year, they're going to. Oh trade. yeah, absolutely. And if he I, keeps putting up games like they got sure last night. I don't think short of him. team in February that'll take him. Short of him averaging a triple double, I, I don't think they're retaining him. I really don't. No. I, if I'm just going to Vegas and betting, I don't think that's happening. So I, I, I think there's an opportunity there. And I think what we saw last night, too, is the the difference. Bogdan Bogdanovich is almost a forgotten man. He just, he just goes about everything yeah. so quietly. But yeah. so much of that offense runs through him. I thought Yogi Ferrell did a great job, by the way, the two, and I was impressed with Buddy Heald. Buddy got a little out of control at some times. He fouled out, but I don't necessarily mind two things from last night, Kyle. I don't mind necessarily when guys like Buddy Heald foul out because it tells me he's engaged on defense. Yeah, and that was and that was just it. Is he was he was playing hard on yeah. defense. Maybe some some not so smart fouls, sure. but I will take that over being disengaged and just giving up easy buckets all night. And the other thing was uh, there was a moment last night where uh, it seemed like the game was stopped for 10 minutes and the Jazz were at the free throw line because of various fouls and all that, and it, there was a technical foul in there. Uh, Willie Cauley-Stein committed the technical foul. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and every time Willie does something good this year, I, I really would like to refrain from saying, well, it's a contract year for Willie. It, it's an 82-game season. If Willie's going to have a good year, we need to praise him for having good games. Right. He didn't outplay Rudy Gobert last night. But he hung with yes. Rudy Gobert last yes. night. Willie's line, 10 of 15, 23 points, 7 boards, 4 assists, 2 blocks, and a steal. Rudy Gobert, uh, in pretty much the same, in 37 and 38 minutes, 7 to 9, 19 points, 15 boards, no steals, 3 blocks. They, they basically played each other. Obviously, what doesn't show up there is Gobert's presence on defense. Right. But three blocks to two. Willie was active, and Willie got a technical foul. And Kyle, I'm okay with Willie getting a technical foul in that situation because that tells me Willie is engaged. Willie is emotional. Willie cares. This isn't a guy who gets texts all the time. Right. And he thought he thought he made a good defense, and it was a technical yep. foul based on a defensive play. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with that. Yep. I'm absolutely okay with that. In fact, I applaud it. I'd rather see him do that than not than not stand in the lane. He took some charges last night. Good for him. Actually, maybe that T didn't mean technical, and actually it meant time to visit MadeaChevy.com and see who's made a great deal at Meta. No, but I totally agree. What we saw yesterday uh, I think was exactly what, what you and I and, and a lot of people texting in and talking on social media wanted was an engaged team on both, side of the, both sides of the floor. Uh, yeah. And the Jazz, the Jazz are further along in their uh, "quote unquote" rebuild, I guess. If that's oh, the Jazz are a legit right. playoff the ja- team right. and, the, and a fringe jazz title are, contender. The Jazz are going to be a top four team in the West. Yeah, don't let night one like the, we're going to get out of the first couple of months of the season going. Wow, the Jazz are really good, and and the Kings hung with them, and they hung with them with the Jazz shooting the lights out in the first half. The Kings starters thoroughly outplayed the Jazz starters. Yep. It's very important to understand that. There's also uh, something I saw last night 
that we've seen before, but it was just really apparent last night. And I phrased it differently on social media than I than I will here. But there's some like kind of like hmm, some like middle finger to De'Aaron Fox's game. Yes, there is. There's a chip on his shoulder. I saw you. Yeah. I saw you saying that. And yeah, there is. It's it, it just like he would he would uh, the Jazz would would make a bucket, and every once in a while, De'Aaron Fox would come down, and it was just like he would say, "I'm scoring here. I'm going to get a good shot, and I'm going to score." And I think we need to see more of that from him. I know he had 21, but there were a couple times last night where there was an opportunity for somebody to take the game over, and if somebody's going to do that, it's got to be him. I, I, the, the glaring weaknesses for this team, uh, other than inexperience, they're going to have defensive issues for mm-hmm. much of the year, and that's something Dave got to be able to, to defend on. on the wings. You, you absolutely have to. You have to be able to defend outside the arc because they can't. Joe Ingles was getting everything he wanted last night. They have to be able to get to the line. That's something that they've missed since DeMarcus left. That was something he was tremendous at. You have to be able to have a guy who, during during times where you just have to have to get a bucket, who knows how to go in there, draw a foul, slow the game down, and you have to be able to make your free throws. That's two. Number three, they're three-point shooting. Last night, the Jazz shot the ball 27 times from behind the arc. The Kings 19. Kings made 37% of their threes. By the way... Kings had nine turnovers to the Jazz, 17. That's tremendous. That's that's being an active team on both sides of the ball. And De'Aaron Fox, not only did De'Aaron Fox shoot 50% from the field, Ricky Rubio was 0-4 last night with a point. And, that's and tough. It, 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 that's not, not that Ricky's an offensive machine, but... One point four assists and two rebounds. That's an, that and, is that is a very below average Ricky Rubio game. Tremendously below average. Oh, and by the way, Donovan Mitchell had twenty four points. He also had five fouls, four turnovers, and was eight of twenty one. Didn't he? Wasn't? Didn't think, he start like zero for six? Yeah, I think he had, did. He have one point in the first quarter or something silly like that. Yeah, he was not. He was not great. No, he wasn't. He the, wasn't great. The, the effort was there. Uh, now we get to the portion of the season where, you know, after the first game, where we need to see this consistently. Like, that's just, that's going to be it. That's going to be this entire year. If they play every game this year like they did last night, they're going to be in really good shape. I want to read a text here. Um, Same team, same everything disappointing. We were way better with the Marcus Cousins. Okay. it's it's, It's an important text because I think it needs some color to it. Biggest DeMarcus Cousins homer in the world right here talking. I might be number two. Could you say the team was better with DeMarcus Cousins than it is right this second? I would agree with that. But here's what's important. What's the ceiling? What's the ceiling with this team? With DeMarcus, and this isn't about DeMarcus. This is about the team in general. This is not a shot at DeMarcus. Let me be clear. You were looking seven, eight, and sweep for the playoffs. With this team, you have a much higher ceiling than the way that team was constructed. So I think it's important to have some context in a statement like that, Kyle. Yeah, you have to look three, four, five years down the road. The the Kings had stagnated. They had maxed out what they were going to do uh, with DeMarcus Cousins on the roster. I think that's accurate. I think that's absolutely accurate. We'll take a break. What's on tap is next. We'll take a look at what's coming up the rest of the day. And Kyle Madsen has something to tell you. And we've got downtown shout-out tickets. We're going to give away two next segment. I'm giving away two right now. Third caller at 339-1140, gets a pair of tickets to downtown shout out over 40 different food trucks and performances from ex-ambassadors Chris Jansen and Sheila E. Make sure to get your tickets at khdk.com. All KHDK giveaways are powered by RoadsvilleAutomall.com. Third caller right now. What's on tap is next. Sports 1140 KHDK. Here's what's on tap. All right, we've got limited basketball compared to last night on tap tonight, but that's because the NBA knows what they're doing. Bulls and Sixers, Heat and Wizards both at 5 o'clock, and then the debt clear 7.30. LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers, he makes his debut for L.A. Uh, He... He and the Lakers will be taking on the Portland Trailblazers at 7.30. We're also going to have some baseball as well. Just one game on the docket as the Dodgers and Brewers are traveling to Wisconsin. Red Sox, Astros. The Red Sox could wrap everything up tonight in Houston. That game will start at 5.09. I love fall. I love this time of year. 
playoff baseball, the NBA starting. Oh, I almost forgot. Thursday night football tonight. The Denver Broncos take on the Arizona Cardinals in the Valley of the Sun in Glendale, Arizona at 520 is your first kick. Hey, look who's in studio. It's Matt George. Look who's in studio. It's Matthew W. George. I need my slams in to hold. I actually put out a tweet last night. Matt George, he of the BOC Challenge, Blind Optimist Challenge. Bad start. 0-1. Catch. Huh. Huh. Hold. <laughs> oh, wow. You did. Matt just caught an L. Kyle just threw an L at Matt. He threw me a 7. No, oh, yeah. Turned it upside down. That's <laughs> a 7. Oh, you're catching 7s all over the place, pal. Yeah, that's what that's what it was supposed to be a seven. <laughs> what did you think it was? A right angle. I actually thought it was a Tetris piece. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That, I'm going to start throwing too. whiteboards at him so he can make Tetris. So, again, we'll explain this a couple times for those just listening, those who listen all the time, and we love you for it. Are like, okay, we get it. <laughs> Here's the deal: uh, Matt makes optimistic predictions. Uh, if they fail, uh, Matt has to pay things off. Now, Matt, I don't know if you noticed this, but we have ourselves the Wheel of Punishment. It looks terrifying. Now, we've already decided in advance that today, as Matt's holding up the crying Jordan, today we already know what we're doing. We're doing the ice bucket over your head. We'll do that shortly after the show. Oh, goody. Looking forward to that, right? Absolutely. Are you going to be wearing this when you get ice bucketed? I'm taking the the new Kings jersey off. Okay, I was going to say, now, do, do we have towels? Do we have things to clean you up? Oh, yeah, I can't prepare. It. Okay, you did. Very good. Uh, I have to work after this. If, for example, if this were if this were any other day uh, other than today and you lost your ice bucket challenge. And you can watch the wheel spin on KHTK.com. Yeah, let me, let me move this here. I'm moving away from you, Matt, so people on TV can see this. Okay. This is what we would be doing at this time of day. We would be finding out Matt's wheel now matt would you like to spin the wheel i feel like that's fair that matt should spin the wheel i will do the honors all right so and and the rule is it has to have at least two rotations just like price is right rules otherwise you've got to respin we'll stop the wheel all right so go ahead get reach over here with that big gangly arm and give it a spin all right here we go wheel of punishment test run here there's two full rotations we have an we have an official roll Oh, 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 oh. Is it Twitter takeover? Oh, no, it's not. It's dye the hair. We only have one spot oh, for the hair wow. dye. Because oh. Kyle and I are, that's like maybe our favorite one. It's a really good one. Thank had, God. Had this been a real spin, Matt would have had to dye his hair the color of our choice. Uh, let's let's go a little deeper on this, though. What, we got to get the rules on this. I, I like to have specific rules. Now, we'll we'll go out and we'll get the hair dye. Uh, well, you can dye it here. You can dye it at home. It's your choice. Are we talking like legit dye? Like oh, legit, legit? yeah, yeah. Now, here's the question. How long do you have to have your hair dyed for? Because uh, I don't think it's fair to have it permanent. See, so here's, right, so here's the thing. We can't, we, we, we're not going to go down to a hair salon and be like, hey, 150 bucks, dye this hair no. black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but you can go to like a like a Halloween store, or even like a, like just a regular convenience store. Yeah. And just get the like cheap hair dye that washes out. Oh, so we'll get, okay, so we'll get, so how long would he have to wear it for then, would you say? Like a week? A week? Is that fair? A week, and you just get, dye it to work, and then you get to wash it out when you go? Yeah, it's, well, yeah. Well, That's fair. Yeah, there you Question, go. Question, when I work Kings games, though, can I wash my hair for that so I look somewhat professional? And then what, re-dye it? Mm. You I, want me to sit in press row with pink hair, if that's mm-hmm. what you guys Are choose? you on press row? Yeah, dude. I, Are you kidding me? You're sitting front row? On the- okay, not press row. Okay. Media row. I was going to say, well, no, I know what you're talking about. Peasantry are you, row. Are you, are you sitting on the at the moke table? No. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> all right. I was going to say, come on. I can't I even think get though, those seats. I think, though, that we need to pull whatever strings you can pull and have that happen for when his hair is dodged. That's a great <laughs> point, and I think I could pull that string, too. So I shut up first, and I, I, I know that's- what you're talking about. Uh, second off, I shared in the media room following the game last night, I shared my bet with everybody. Yeah. And I've never been called an idiot more in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, that's kind of the point of this whole thing. I mean, yeah. Jason really... Jones particularly liked yeah, it. Yeah, Jason. Jason did. Jones? Is that a mean thing? Yeah, no. wow. No, not He's Jason. Weird. He's not snarky. Um, I can tell you in advance, I think Kyle would agree with me. I, I think the default color we're going to go with is going to be purple. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, th- I think purple has to be the move. Um, I'm in. So, so I think that, which, you know, you could wear a hat. If you wanted, if you went on press row. Like a fedora? Uh, fedora, perhaps cowboy, top hat. 
Who'd wear a cowboy hat? Kangle. Who'd wear a cowboy hat? Apparently Kyle a few years ago, along with Boots. Yeah, I went through a phase, dude. Um, uh, 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 Another thing I want to ask. Um, Should we have a rule about repeating of punishments? So I saw on the wheel, if I, I snuck a glance, that there's two spots for Twitter takeover, there's two spots for photo shoot, and two spots for... Sandwich board? Yeah. Is that going to be replaced as we get better ideas? That's what I'm in? wondering. Ooh, yeah. yeah. It's just maybe we'll take it off and it's just a blank space, like a respin. I, I think until so. Until we get a better or, idea. Or we replace it with another punishment. I th- there should be a space, too. There's a mystery space, so I don't know what that is. If there's something on the back of the card, but there should be a, like, drive choice. Or- yeah, well, the mystery, that's exactly what that is. If we land on mystery, where there's only one spot for mystery, uh, and we'll spin it at the be- you know towards the beginning of the show, um... We will give, oh no, we'll spin it at the end of the show with you. And then the next day, what we'll be doing is we will be taking uh, suggestions from the audience. Right. Uh, Kyle and I will will probably narrow it down to the three that don't harm you as huh. much. And then we'll have the audience vote on it. And then that'll be your punishment. Okay. Is there any part of you, uh, after going 0 and 1, is there any part of you that is perhaps regretting doing this? No, because I feel like I'm getting off light for a starter. I think the ice bucket is a pretty good starter. I agree. Well, I've done it before, and I'm not too afraid of it. And big picture here, Dave, we were talking about this earlier, uh, and, and I was obviously joking, but uh, big picture here for the Kings, you have to be pretty satisfied with, with how Marvin Bagley played yeah. in only 12 so, minutes last night. Honestly, had when Bagley exited out of the game, and then I saw immediately Doncha scored his eighth point, I knew, okay, I lost this bet. But the Kings were still in the game at the time, and I would have been – more than thrilled with the Kings' victory and a bet loss. Sure. Uh, I am I saw a lot of people actually on social media. I saw you posted that you actually kind of felt bad about it, Dave. I did. I, a lot of people were actually making excuses for it. I I don't feel a need. We we agreed that it was straight up points no matter what the situation was. I'm yeah. disappointed that Dave Yeager could only find 12 minutes for Marvin Bagley last, mm. last night when Justin Jackson played 10 and a half minutes at the four spot. I don't understand that. Justin Jackson playing 30 minutes off the bench, but... I get that that unit was playing well. You weren't going to take Willie or Bielita out. Uh, so it was just unfortunate, disappointing. But I got off also a little bit lucky because Luka Doncic yeah. had a terrible night. Like, th- the fact that it was only a four-point difference uh, was was pretty significant. Yeah, I I wonder. I mean, he had four or ten points on, like, 14 shots. Four 16. Si- 16 shots. Four assists. Four Eight turnovers. Boards. He didn't yeah. have eight boards, which is good. I mean, it's it's a rookie debut, so it was yeah. fine. Would you rather? Would you rather wear a good question crown on press row or have purple hair? <gasps> yeah. Whatever one doesn't get me in trouble more. Yeah, that, you know the only thing I wonder. I is... I don't think they'd let him wear the crown because it's high. Yeah, there's people, people behind, behind him. him. Yeah. So yeah. I I worked with Utah Jazz Radio last night. The Kings got off to their. Ooh, ex- I worked with Utah Jazz Radio. I'm Utah Jazz. Jazz. No, it's a bad thing. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so well, actually, no, it was fun. Uh, but within the first uh, three minutes of the game, when the Jazz took their first timeout because the Kings got off to a good start, I did a mini like fist pump no, during the timeout. I can't do that. I got in trouble for that. So I can only imagine dyeing my hair purple or doing oh, or a, a, a crown will get me in hey, massive trouble. Now, without naming names, how close can you get to describing what exactly does it mean that you got in trouble? Uh, Did somebody speak to you? No. No. I, I got yelled at and said, this team's paying you. That was it. And it was like two seconds. It was during the timeout. Uh, and then he came back out of the timeout and everything was fine. <laughs> and then I worked stats for him. Wow. Wow. Huh. It's okay. I was in the lounge last night because I, I I left at halftime. Oh, I'm Dave. I was in the lounge last night. You know what that is? Pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't even think about yeah, that. Yeah, you just threw that so See, There was like eight I've people left there. in there, Me and neither. when we went up, I said, "Let's go!" And like everybody stopped and looked, and like there was a little kid next to me, and like I scared everybody. They weren't watching the game, and I was like at my table by myself. Dialed. Screw Let's those go! people. Screw you. Yeah. Leave the Golden One Center if you're not watching the game. Now right, we got to go throw some ice water on Matt George. Our thanks to uh, owner of the Sacramento Republic and minority owner of the Sacramento Kings, Kevin Nagel, Sam Amick of the Athletic. Kyle Madsen did a job. Eunice did a phenomenal oh, job. Caller number uh, five. Call number five. Downtown shout on tickets for you. Uh, all KCK giveaways powered by Roseville Automotive. All right, get in there. Call number five for uh, Matt George, Kyle Mats, and Eunice, myself, and all of you. Uh, make sure to check out the video on the Sports 1140 KCK Facebook and Instagram. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Jim Rome is next right here on Sports 1140 KCK. Bye. Bye. Now. Ah. Bye.